with the labor movement already angling for a fight over the sudden but yet longer expected removal of subsidy on petroleum importation. What could be the likely impact of this development on the already frosty relations between government and labor? Joe Ajero is president of Nigeria Labor Congress, the umbrella body of Nigerian workers. He joins us now to rub minds on the plight of his members, most of whom are already feeling the heat from President Tinubu's subsidy removal pronouncement. Good to have you on the program, NRC President Joe Ajero. Well, very quickly, um, you must have listened to, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Fawibe, who is an expert, oil and gas expert, more than 50 years experience, a major player in the uh, industry. And he has provided us with a justification of subsidy removal, as government has also done. But NLC, which you lead, Nigeria Labor Congress is saying it will shut down Nigeria on Wednesday. And government is saying, come to the negotiating uh, table. Let us talk. You had a meeting. It yielded nothing. You are supposed to meet again today. What is going on? What is your minimum demand? And are you making any progress in terms of dialogue with government? Thank you very much. I don't think we are making any progress so far uh, because we are still at the same point. We have not gone beyond the point. That, that's where we are. Uh, the, 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 the issue of alternative and subsidy are things we have discussed over the, over the years and our position we are made clear. Uh, so, but government appears not to be interested in our position and maybe they want to roll it over us. That's where we are. Okay, but I understand that you were supposed to meet again today. What's the situation with that? And what are the issues? Uh, what are your proposals? Well, of, of, of what use is today's meeting? We, 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 by Wednesday, by, by Tuesday night, I held a meeting with the TUC president with uh, Mr. President and his team. There and then, NNPC said they were going to bring out figures and prizes. And on the spot, I told them, if you do that, we'll fight back. There's no basis for you to, you know, to take that decision before discussion. And they went ahead and did that. We, we, we decided to boycott the meeting, but people still prevailed. And we attended the meeting and asked them to return to status quo to enable us to discuss freely. And up to now, they have not done that. So what are we going there to do? Well, but if you look at it, the Tinubu administration is saying that this new administration is presented with a fairer complaint. <coughs> there is no provision in the budget 2023 beyond May 29 for subsidy. There is a backlog, as NMPCL has pointed out, of about 2.3 trillion. Economists have said, Nigeria is broke. We can't afford it. So the Tinubu administration will seem to have no other option to say, we can't pay. We won't pay Dario for once wrote a book with that title. So if there's no money, why is labor saying Yeah, what happens is that every... Every government comes into office and, and they will learn even how to uh, change a napkin. And then from there, they move from step to step. Now, I don't agree that there is no appropriation you know, beyond May. My understanding is that there is an appropriation up to the end of June. And there about other things could follow. Now, if he's saying that there is, you know, no appropriation for subsidy, then fine and good. You know, we can take it from there that, and we have to discuss it. No appropriation for subsidy doesn't mean that the NMPC, a private limited company, you know, will now determine for us the price. If they say they have removed subsidy and it should be subject to market forces, 
then it shouldn't be for NNPC to dictate prices. They don't have such powers, and there, there, is no pro, there is no provision that their board, as a limited liability company, ever met and took such resolution. Such dictates are not acceptable to the labor movement. I think we know beyond that. Now, we, he equally needs to tell us the subsidy they have paid, who and who were paid the subsidy, what and what did they use it for. And can we have the names of the people that collected the subsidy and the companies that collected it? And so that we can sit down. We have agreed on some alternatives before now. Why are those alternatives not working? Well, President Ajero, the NMPCL managing, group managing director is on record as having said that, look, NMPC monopoly, monopoly is not convenient for them. The government has said they will get the refineries to work. The government, being a continuum, has also said that with the advent of the uh, Dangote refinery, 650,000 barrels of uh, refined crude oil, over 34 million uh, supply of uh, fuel per day, would also ameliorate the system. And the market forces will change the price uh, index over time, and that Nigerians just need to be patient. Why is labor not persuaded by these factual arguments as they put it? Does, fa does market forces mean money monopoly in a sector? How can there be market forces if Dangote is the only person producing? Are we not repeating a private sector monopoly, which is even worse than a public sector monopoly, which the NMPs have been maintaining? What is the situation in, in, in the cement income industry and other areas? You know, why are the, the, the uh, Potako refinery not working? Why is Wari refinery not working? Why is Kaduna refinery not working? Unless there are other players in the sector, we can't be talking of market forces. We can't be talking of competition in the sector. You can't have a single market participant in a sector, and we're talking of market forces. It doesn't go that way. Between now and December, if key is not taken, if it's only Dangote that is producing, a litre will be selling for over 1,000 naira per litre. So the argument doesn't make sense before us. Okay, NSC President, you have already issued a statement under the auspices of the organized labor, NLC, but it doesn't look like there is unity even within organized labor. There are groups that are saying this is a good development and that they support it. So do you think that your strike, as proposed, will still go on with uh, discordant voices within organized labor? Well, there is no discordant voice within organized labor. If there is any, you let me know. We have 36 states councils of the NLC. We have 54 affiliate unions that met on Friday no dissenting voice, and we took a decision on this action. And every union you know, has issued strike directives to their members, and the strike is on. For the newspapers that are saying there is a division, let them say where the, the, the division is having. The NLC does not operate a uh, northern branch, uh, eastern branch, western branch. So who are the, who, where is the discordant voice coming from? Let them wait till Wednesday for them to know. No, but the federal government is saying that, look, we don't need to have this crisis because adequate supply will be ensured. And that if there is adequate supply, there will be differentiation in terms of, you know, uh, pump prices uh, across the country. And that that will just be a clear evidence of market forces determining. You buy where you can afford. And that this will check smuggling. Well, well until... Until there is competition, sir, you know, what, what, they are, what they are saying doesn't work. Part of our agreement in 2021 is the issue of the compressed natural gas as an alternative. And that one, even the then Minister of State uh, Petroleum, Siva, now say that it's going to cost 90 naira per liter. And everybody was impressed. The CBN was supposed to have, if not, they have not released 255, 250 billion naira for conversion of vehicles and power stations. 
Ip man, the owners of these uh, filling stations, have donated their uh, uh, filling stations for pay for the conversion to take place. And uh, as at now, over ten thousand cars were converted in Benin alone. And we are asked, we are expecting them to do this conversion for us to have alternative. If you have alternative to PMS, now why are we talking of the labor movement cannot tell you to remove uh, or not, not remove uh, subsidy? Then we have alternative in a situation in a sector you have only one product and there's no alternative and you are compelling everybody to buy at high rate. It's not, it, it, does, it doesn't make any sense and we will not succumb to it. So between now and the next one month or two months, if this government is serious, you can we can get conversion. And in your own car, you have provision a time for CNG, you have a provision for a PMS. Anyone you you want to switch over to it, and this is common. What is difficult for it than forcing everybody to buy a, a, a dictated price? Okay, uh, President of NLC, uh, Joe Ajero, two quick things. Beyond all these issues. Are you making any other efforts to engage with the government? Because there are many ways to engage to government, to reach out to government. And then I've also seen a story saying, even the Nigerian Union of uh, Journalists, <laughs> your main original constituency before you joined Labour, is saying journalists, you down tools. <laughs> are you suggesting that I should not appear on the screen on Wednesday? <laughs> because that would be a tough deal. <laughs> because I will come here to talk and do my job. <laughs> you know, I, I hope you get what I mean. Thank you very much, sir. You, you, if you watch, the, the, the journalists are worst hits, sir. You know, that's, that's your constituency. That's my constituency. You know, they cover so many kilometers per day. Whether with their own private vehicles or with public transport. You can hardly fill a tank now with about 30, 40,000, 30,000. And, and this is biting on everybody. And I, like I said earlier, there can be abortion before pregnancy. If we are talking of cushioning effect, talking with government, how do we solve this problem? It can be after announcing price. And that was why in the discussion with NMPC, we say, let us talk first. And they say, no, we have to do this. And when they do it, you know, they are telling us that the, uh, the, the palliative they are providing, that they are going to provide 55,000 for 50 million Nigerians. And it's a one-off thing. So why are you going to give a Nigerian 5,000, you know, that he will spend one night over in, in his, I pass my neighbor. And the Bureau of Statistics have stated that over 133 million Nigerians are multidimensionally poor. And then you are talking of 50 million uh, Nigerians. We are ready. There's hardly anybody I have not talked with, even the new uh, uh, chief of staff, even the new secretary to government, who have been talking. We have not closed any chances of talking. But you can't, you can't start a process before and you say whether we like it or not, we should fall in line. We are Nigerians as well. You know, and this thing has nothing to do with even labor alone because they were saying wage review. If I go wage review for less than 4 million Nigerians, what happened to almost 200 million Nigerians? How would they manage? Who would take care of them? How would they move about? Well, on that note, I would like to thank you very much, President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Comrade Joe Ajero, for joining us on this live this Sunday talk show. <laughs>